Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're featuring the Zin U50 SDR model and this has come courtesy of one of my subscribers Robin who's allowed me to review a couple of his watches so gotta say a big thank you to him and if you'd like me to review one of your watches um, please leave me a comment below. So here we go the U50 SDR and isn't it a corker? I think this is a really cracking looking watch. There's just Zinn really did well with this watch. It's only been around now for, I'd say, I think it came out early 2012. Uh, sorry, no, 2020. And it's been a massive hit. As many people love the U series of watches, but are sometimes put off by the size of them. And what I mean by that is there is my SDR UX. And you can see the size difference there. So... It's only a few millimetres, but it is surprising on the wrist how different these two feel. But anyway, back to this one. So sizes, we're talking, it's a 41 millimetre case size. We have just a fraction over 11, mil, uh, 11 millimetres thick and a lug to lug of only 47 millimetres and the bracelet size on this is 20 mil. So let's get a bit closer into that dial and have a look. Now, as you can see, it really is a cracking looking watch. They've kept with the U1 style hands, the Lego style hands they're affectionately known. And they just look really, they just literally, someone's gone on a photocopy and said shrink. And they've shrunk it down. And it really does look really cool for it. And especially with this bezel as well, it kind of adds a little bit more to it, I think. Let me just clean that. As you can see, the the hands on this watch are just so synonymous with zin you know it's one of those things you only have to see these um hands and you know exactly well you used to always know exactly what model it is you'd always say the u1 but now obviously the u50 has these so i like the way they've got the gloss paint on there with the red and then they've got quite a bit of a luminous material on both the um hours and minute hand as to does the second hand the minute track and hour track is printed um, but again full of bloom and we have that really nice uh, logo down there u50 automatic and 500 meters yep even though this watch is only 11 millimeters thick it's actually a 500 meter diver if i just move that minute hand for a second you'll also see we do have a date window at the three o'clock position you can see there which is just nicely hidden so there you go if you're worried um there are some marks on the crystal this actually isn't damaged to the crystal this is the ar coat and i believe has been scratched robin to be fair is pretty hard on his watches but there again he buys watches to use not just to leave in a safe and never use again i believe he goes swimming with these in the ocean so he really does use it for its actual intended purpose now as you can see sapphire crystal flat across there with ar coating we do have the sdr bezel going on there and all sdr is just schwarz so it's just german for black bezel uh turning bezel on the top now it uses these screws around here there should be one just there you can see it just there and basically that locks the bezel in place so if you were to use if you were to get any i think any rolex or or seiko or watches along those lines you'd use a little pry tool or a little pry knife to pop them off and that's all you need to do but with this it doesn't it is actually locked in place so it means it's actually more secure also for removing the bezel it is actually a lot easier like i showed a couple of weeks ago where i swapped the bezel over um on this ux because originally it never came as a sdr and i actually modified it and fitted the sdr bezel on there so that's actually a nice little bit of tech now the actual case on this is bead blasted and it is a basically it's german submarine steel and that is a little bit harder than standard steel but also it is impervious to salt water so that's why they use it actually on the hulls of the non-nuclear submarines over in germany 
so it really is a high quality steel now this watch is a little bit different to most out there because it has actually been tagmented so it just means it's a little bit more scratch well no it isn't a little bit more it's quite a lot more scratch resistant than say most normal steel um their normal steel now that doesn't mean it is scratch proof or dent proof um there are a couple of marks on this where it's been hammered around might have caught a rock on the beach in the ocean who knows so it's not impervious to scratches it just means it's a lot more resilient to scratches so as you can see we come around here we have a bracelet with its um hex key fittings in there which i just think looks so kind of industrial kind of looking to it i really like that and the zinc clasp which is nice and slim and that's one thing i do like about it. the case back on this is completely solid um it's a shame because hiding behind there is the Salita sw301 um in its top grade variation so what that means is you're getting 56 hours of power reserve i did put this on the time grapher and it is running absolutely spot on. Um, I really am quite impressed with, I've yet to come across a kind of a newish Zin or any Zin which has been serviced or, you know, is relatively new, which isn't running well within chronometer specs. They are very, very good movements. It's a shame because even though you can't see it, it's actually a well decorated movement. Um, but there you go. This is a tool watch, I suppose, and that's the whole purpose of having this solid, all, all this solid case and so forth. And I dare say, if you had a display case on the back, it would increase its thickness most probably. So I say, 25 joule movement, around about 56 hours of power reserve, and um, I think a really good movement. In fact, I'd say it's a better movement than the SW200, uh, which is found in all the other movements. Uh, it would be nice if one day they would switch over, but who knows. As we can see here, we do have drilled lugs, which means strap changing is actually quite easy. And to be fair, I will put it on, let's zoom out here. I will put it on a couple of these straps just so you have an idea how it looks in different variations. But just before I do, one quick thing, being that this is tagmented, I don't know if you can see, but it is actually slightly different color. It is a slightly darker color to the standard um, submarine steel. The treatment, the case hardening, does actually darken it somewhat. So as you can see, it is a little bit darker. So that is one thing to remember if ever you are buying one, it is going to be slightly different because when you go to order this watch, you can basically specify if you want it to be fully tagmented. If you do, when you do get it, you'll get this little mark on there on the back and it will also be on the case back of this watch. That little symbol there, having that symbol on the back of your watch also means the price goes up. So the price for this I believe for the tagmenting is around about 250 euros more, around about 250 pounds more um, over here now. So, but for that, you are getting a watch, which is a um, bracelet and so forth, which is fully case hardened. Um, is it worth it? Well, that's really only a question you can decide. To be fair, mine are not, um, apart from my black model, um, you, uh, U2 um, and uh, my 144, they have been because the simple fact is they're black. They can only apply the black hard coating if they have tagmented the actual um, case or uh, body of the watch. So let me show you the difference with this on a couple of different straps so you've got an idea how it looks. So here we go. This is it on a black. Um, silicon strap from Zin. To be fair, this strap, uh, this silicon strap here, I'd say is possibly 13 or 14 years old at least. So you get an idea how well they actually age. It is a little bit smoother than what it would be if it was brand new. But this here, this is basically how it looks on here. And I think it's, it looks good on the black silicon. Um, the only thing I would say, and this is, I, I, Obviously, the finish on this is the wrong finish for that. I have one somewhere which is the correct finish. But one thing I do not like, on the smaller watches, I always think these bigger um, clasps 
just simply look wrong to me. It is far too big for the actual watch. That's just my my opinion. You know, I'm, I'm, if you like it, then yeah, you know, good to you. But I think this is just wrong. I'll take it off and I'll I'll show you kind of one of the reasons why. This is where having drilled lugs is an absolute uh, super advantage. You only need a small pump, uh, a pusher like this just to simply press in there to release it. But what I mean is look at the size of this clasp versus the actual watch. It is absolutely huge. So, you know, that is just, I think it's far too big for the actual watch. Now I'll show you it on this, this white one here. And I personally think if you're going to buy a U50 and you're thinking of buying, oh, oh, almost lost that one. Um, you're going to buy a U50 on a silicon strap, I would always go for the butterfly clasp. To be fair, this is the older style butterfly clasp. Um, so I would, um, for me personally, I would get the, you know, order the new ones. They are really, really good. So let me just fit all this in there. Might be easy for one second. There we go. Now what I do when I, just out of interest, when I'm fitting a silicon strap, I place the first one in like that. So that's in, then compress the silicon like this. And then all I do, I use a tool. Um, this tool here is actually a Bergeon spring tool, V7767. Uh, and all I do is hold down on the shoulder there and press it in. Now, when you come to fit this, you have to kind of, that was it, it clicked. So you have to press it in and against. And let's have a look at that. And that's the, yeah, obviously it's a white silicon, um, but I think this looks absolutely great on this watch. But can you see what I mean by the actual butterfly clasp? I think this clasp just suits this watch so, so much better. Um, let me show you on the wrist as well. Quick wrist check. I'm wearing a Seiko MM200. Bob over there is sporting a Dodan Type 23 GMT, which is a very, very uh, funky kind of weird watch. Very French, actually. And there you go. So that's it with the silicon strap. And I think that looks truly, really, really great on that silicon strap. But also, if I show you it from the back here, it just looks more in keeping. It just looks right the size of this proportionally to the head of a watch, but that's just me. Um, but I say, this is the old style of butterfly clasps. I do have a the new style and it is flat clean across the back there. And I think it looks absolutely great. So let me put it back on the bracelet and you can, we'll get to our final thoughts. Okay, so here we are back on the bracelet. Now, one thing I should have pointed out actually was the bezel action on this watch. Now, let's just do a quick turn. It's got quite a muted sound. Back play. Yeah, there is a tiny bit of back play. There's no argument there. But it feels solid and positive. And I think it does. Let's see. Well, actually, check the alignment. There you go and it does align spot on. Now, when it actually comes to the alignment of this, if any of you seen my video where I'm, I show how to remove the bezels and replace them, you'll know there's actually tiny slots where you can, I believe you can actually adjust it. There's a certain amount of adjustment you do have within there. But to be fair, they all the ones I have and have come across always line up anyway. Um, is a screw down crown on this one, I should point it out. And, Bump, and you feel it pop out air. So there is absolutely plenty of um, thread on there to allow for the actual screwing, uh, screwing of the crown. And it screws in nice and easy. Quite a few turns there. 
Um, I just think it's a cracking watch. I think it opens up, you know, so many people who feel that the U series of watches at 44 mil is too big. I think this really does kind of play into those hands. Let me put it on my wrist. Now I say I've got seven and a quarter inch wrists, maybe a fraction over. And I think that looks absolutely the biz. I think it really, really does look good. Um, if I put the UX on my arm as well, you get an idea of the size difference. I personally, on a seven, my size wrist, I have actually prefer the U50, I'd say. The U50, I think, just fits better. Um, let's see, can I get them both on my wrist at the same time? And there you go. That's the two of them side by side, so you got an idea. But it is, it's just a cracking watch. Um, but it's down to you. Would you go for, say, the U50 versus the U1? So obviously the U1 being about that size. So let me know in the comments below. Okay then guys, all the best and stay safe out there. Bye.